osteogenesis imperfecta. It is brittle bone disorder. It is a rare genetic bone disorder that's characterized by fragile bones that break easily. Um, they have type three. Type three is the most severe form that you can survive the neonatal period with. There are 15 types in literature. Um, all ranging from mild, moderate to severe. Noah and Milan were more severe. And in type three, um, it is progressively deforming. So it is something that, you know, they will always have, they will always have to be treated for. And um, they get care from the OI clinic at um, Vanderbilt Children's Hospital in Nashville. And um, they just started a clinical trial a year ago for a new medicine. When I was first pregnant with Noah, I, I had no idea what to expect. Um, I have friends that have kids with special needs, but I had never experienced it firsthand. It's very different when you experience it firsthand. Um, it's also different because they told me that they didn't know if he would survive. Um, when I had him, they told me that I would probably not be able to bring him home. Um, however, I refused to listen to that and um, I just got him the best care that he could get. Um, and then at eight months old, I finally found the OI clinic in Nashville, and that's when everything changed. That's when he started doing really good. It was much different the second time. It was very surprising, very heartbreaking whenever I found out that I'm the one who carries the gene and which caused them to have it. Um, but it was so much better because I felt so much more prepared. I felt like I could care for her better than what I could care for him. With him, I was just scared to death of always hurting him. Um, with her, I was more comfortable and I could be more at ease. And it, it seems like I was able to comfort her and be there for her more so than what I could with him because I was always crying. I was tore all to pieces. And with Milam, it's like, okay, this is what we have to do. This is what we're doing. I hope that they accept them for children, for just kids that want to have fun and want to, you know, be like other kids. Yeah, they have a disorder, but, you know, they're still special. There's still room for them in the world. There's still things that they can do in the world. You know, Milam, she broke my heart the other day whenever she told me that she didn't think she was beautiful because she can't walk, that that's what makes her beautiful is being able to walk. And you know, that's what I strive for every day is making them feel like even though they can't do things exactly like other children or other people can do, they can still do it in their own way. So I came in and I adopted them. So they, they are now my children. And uh, they have put life into a different perspective for me. Things that were important to me are not now. You know, I live, just see them happy and play. And to me, they're, they're, they're normal. I mean, you have your scary days. And there's some times that they absolutely just rack my nerves. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, they make uh, every day just a little bit better. I always tell parents that there are bad days, but there are far more good days than outweigh those bad days. It's okay to have a bad day. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be upset that your children have the dis this disorder or your children have special needs, but don't stay in that place. There's still so much life to live. And you know, what I always tell the kids is you don't have to stand up to stand out.